this is the commission Thursday where we encourage the church that every believer is a witness. And I want to build on the foundation that has been laid with Pastor Victor, where he's been talking with the church that every believer is the salt, every believer is the light, every believer is an ambassador. And last week, uh, he talked about every believer being the messenger of the good news. And probably what, is, uh, what you're asking yourself is, uh, who is a witness? A witness is somebody who knows the truth that the rest of the people don't know. If I'm a witness of something that has happened, I'm the only person who knows the witness of what has happened that the rest of the people do not know. So that, uh, that's the witness. And we are the witness of the good news. Which good news are we talking about? We live in a generation whereby darkness is all over the world. The same way it has been talked, I agree with what Isaiah chapter 60 verses 2 talks about. The earth is covered with darkness and the great darkness is over the people. Now, when the great darkness is over the people, everyone is trying to look for the solution, but they are looking for it in the wrong direction. And that's why we are bringing up the good news, because the good news is what we have that, uh, the, that the, this particular world is looking for. And I want to agree with what James, uh, uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 talks about. He says, we've seen and we've heard of this Jesus Christ. So as a believer, you are a witness because number one, you've seen Jesus Christ, you've heard about Jesus Christ, and you've experienced this Jesus Christ. So you will be, uh, you become the salt when you've, uh, you've tested this Jesus Christ. You become the light when you've interacted with this Jesus Christ, and you become an ambassador when you have an encounter with him. So it becomes something that we've experienced in your personal life. That's where you are a carrier of this good news, and that's why we call you a witness. And uh, as we talk about being a witness today i want to focus on one major thing that we talk about healing divine healing i know we live in a generation where we have pandemic and a lot of things has been uh, pandemic has affected a lot of things in our lives it might be the physical health we've lost several people uh, during the, uh, the the period of pandemic uh, the coronavirus i know some of people are uh, they're ailing with the health issues some people are going through uh, fi uh, financial issues that have wounded their heart uh, last month we, talk, we had about uh, we had the issue of 483 uh, cases that were uh, 483 people that committed uh, committed suicide in a span of three months and that's a very big number. They are going through a depression. They are going through a wound. So today we want to talk about being a witness of a divine healing. And I want to read from the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verses 10. Isaiah 53 verse 10 says, "Yet." It was the will of the Lord to bruise him. Uh, he was put, uh, he has put him in the grief when he make himself an offering for sin. I want us to look at the word grief in this particular context. When you hear the word grief, several things are uh, reason with this particular word. Number one is sickness. When the Bible talk of grief, it's sickness. It talk about weakness and it talk about the disease. So the Bible is trying to tell us. When Jesus Christ, God made him, God allowed him, uh, it was the will of the Father to bruise his son Jesus Christ to go through the grief, in other words, to go through the sickness, to go through the pain uh, and everything that we've seen. And one thing that comes when we go through this uh, pain, sickness and issue, another thing is sorrow. You can never relate with anyone who's going through this, but they are, anybody who's been bruised. So Jesus Christ went through the sorrow. Jesus Christ went through the pain. What was the reason that the Father allowed him to, do, uh, to go through this? Because in Genesis chapter 3, we are reminded when Adam, our father, uh, did a battle trade with, uh, with Satan, and what he did, he traded everything for what God has placed for him. So God intended for man to have a good life. In other words, God intended man to have peace, to enjoy his life. But this peace was robbed away. Joy was robbed away. And the man was wounded. And today I want to talk with you. You as a man who's wounded, uh, who is wounded, that particular lady who is wounded, that particular family that is wounded, you are going through a particular thing. I want to remind you, it might be a physical wound, it might be an emotional wound, it might be a spiritual wound, a wound, it might be a financial wound. I want to remind you that Christ has gone through that. Uh, and uh, verse, uh, I, the same chapter, Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, But he was wounded 
for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes we are healed. The scripture says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ we were healed. The same sentiment that 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 24 talks about. First Peter, when, he say, uh, when Peter talks about, uh, we quote uh, Isaiah 54, he says, we were healed. It's not something that is happening right now. It happened uh, when Jesus Christ went at the cross. So we are witnesses because we've gone through the wound. Our peace has been robbed. Our joy has been robbed. But we are coming out victorious and we can testify that Christ has come out. Uh, uh, that we are coming out, we are coming out because Christ has overcome all this. And today I want to remind you, you might be going through something. I want to tell you that you can be a witness because Christ has overcome. And if Christ has overcome, you too can overcome. Be blessed.